Luke chapter 1, beginning in verse 39. It says, And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste, into a city of Judea, Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. Now there, there's a lot of information that we can pull out of this. We're just going to focus on one area this morning. But before we get into that, uh, again, this is Pentecost Sunday. At Pentecost Sunday, we always connect to Acts chapter 2, and we always connect to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, and those on those 120 believers, the, the sound of a rushing mighty wind, clothed in tongues of fire, they all begin to speak in other tongues. People from all over the city started coming in at the commotion that was going on in that room. It was a Pentecost, what we would call a Pentecostal meeting. It was a loud meeting. There was a lot of stuff going on. People came to see. That. Now that right there is an example of how the Pentecostal church should grow. There should be enough stuff in the happening in the church right. that people on the outside come to see. Amen. Now when I say enough stuff happening in the church, it doesn't mean that we're all acting around going crazy. Those people got accused of being drunks, and so there was some stuff going on, right? But I'm saying the way that we love, the way that we live, the way that we think, the way that we act, there should be enough going on in us that causes people to want to come in. Right. Uh, so here we see uh, what's happened is Mary has talked to uh, Gabriel. Mary has become pregnant with Jesus. And she immediately goes to see Elizabeth. Uh, so when she goes to see Elizabeth, the Bible, Gabriel tells, tells us that she was already in her sixth month. So Elizabeth is about six months pregnant when Mary goes to see her. And Mary's going to stay with her for about three months or so until about the time that John the Baptist is born. Uh, just for you, uh, the, for those of us that's raised up Pentecost, you know, we, we put a lot of emphasis on Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Now, the, to me, this is an encounter, and I understand the significance here, because uh, keep in mind, this is, this is pre-Jesus. Jesus is still in Mary's womb. Right. And so, but here we see a very f familiar phrase that says that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. It's the same Greek term used in Acts chapter 2 when those 120 believers were filled. It's the same Greek term that's used there. Uh, but, the, but the first thing I want to share with you today is a simple fact. If you are filled, then you are not empty. That's pretty common sense, right? If you're filled, you're not empty. And so when, when God filled Elizabeth with the Holy Spirit, that tells us, that tells us there was something that needed to happen. And so the, the first area, before we get into the message this morning, I just want to address this one aspect of life, and that's this. That if we're not careful, we can go through life feeling empty. Right. right. Feeling like we're missing something. You, you, we get in a rut, we get in routines, we're doing the same thing day after day, week after week. What are we accomplishing? And I just want to tell you this morning, God makes a difference. In that. Yes, he does. God brings fulfillment to life. Yeah. Most of us, we have schedules and structures and things that we do. And it doesn't matter whether you're working or you're retired. I haven't been retired in my life. But, San Sandy, I'm sure you're new to retirement. A new, a new system has to be developed, right? right? Instead of waking up every day and getting ready to go to work and go out to work, now a new system comes into place. And that's generally how we are. Whether it, and it might not be a real busy schedule, but it's still a schedule. It's still a structure. Well, here, again, that word filled. They filled you. I want to tell you today, God wants to fill your life. Amen. Amen. He wants to give you purpose to your life. He wants you to feel like you've got a purpose, mm -hmm. like there's something positive for you. That's, that's what God wants for you. And I want to encourage you with that. Secondly, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, then you are empty of what was there prior. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. I can't be filled with two things. I can only be filled with one thing. And so if I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, then I'm empty to what was there prior. Mm -hmm. And so why should I, as a believer, ask God to fill me with the Holy Spirit? Because I want out of me what's already there. Mm -hmm. I want out of me. 
So what's in me might be depression, what's in me might be anxiety, what's in me might be fear, it might be lust, it might be some type of immorality. God, fill me. So the act of salvation in itself is not just for somebody to say, hey, I'm saved, now all my sins are washed, but there's really not a change. That's not the case. Because what we see here in Elizabeth, because again, this is before Jesus. What we see here in Elizabeth is what the Holy Spirit does in the life of any individual who comes in contact with Christ. And that is when we come into contact with Christ, there should be a filling. There should be something substantial that takes place inside of us because of our contact with Jesus. And that's going to be our focus this morning. Being a Christian is not doing your best. Being a Christian is not self-help, just trying to improve. Yes. I wish I would have got that when I was much younger. Because I, I kind of grew up in an era that said, that told us everything that we're supposed to do, and then kind of patted you on the back and said, now go do it. Stop doing certain things. Anybody have that kind of mindset? Mm -hmm. Stop doing certain things. Start doing certain things. Now do your best at going to go do it. Now, how many of you have ever felt like this is a futile challenge? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, yeah. I'm never going to get there. <laughs> I'm never going to get there. I'm never going to perfect it. I might get a good few days at it, but then pff, I seem to go backwards. And there's a whole other spiritual lesson in there of our tendency to go backwards. But the reality, you guys understand where I'm coming from, right? Oh, yeah. But when we have Jesus and we encounter Christ, we're no longer, it's not about being by ourselves. My, one of my, a good verse for me, I, I hate to say one of my favorite verses. <laughs> because depending on the topic, it's a favorite verse, right? So I have hundreds of favorite verses, maybe thousands of favorite verses, I don't know. So it depends on what the topic is. And that's my favorite verse, Rick, you know what I mean? That, that's it. So for this topic, here's one of my favorite verses. Titus chapter 2, it says, The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us. I love this. Yes. Teaching us. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. See, this is, a, this is what I wish I would have understood when I was much younger. It's, it's not my responsibility to do it. It's my responsibility to learn it. Mm -hmm. And it's my responsibility to let the Holy Spirit partner with me. Every believer in here this morning, you have a partner in the Holy Spirit yeah. to help you in your life. Mm -hmm. You have a partner in Holy Spirit to help you, to teach you, to teach you how to say no to certain things and to teach you how to say yes to other things. Amen. You have a partner in your life that will help you stay under control. You have a partner in your life that will remind you of some things. That will teach you things. Aren't you thankful today for the partnership that we have with Holy Spirit in our life? Amen? Amen. Holy Spirit. And church, now hear me. Holy Spirit is not unique to Pentecostal churches. Look at Elizabeth here. This is not an Acts 2 story. But you realize in the verses that we read here, the Holy Spirit filled her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And here's another thing. I might not have caught this. When the Holy Spirit filled her, Elizabeth spoke out. Elizabeth said to Mary, she said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. You guys have heard that verse before. Mm -hmm. Have you ever asked yourself, how did she know this? Mary didn't live in the same town as Elizabeth. Mary just talked to Gabriel by herself. We don't have anything in Scripture that Gabriel told Elizabeth about Mary. We know Gabriel told Mary about Elizabeth. So how in the world did Elizabeth know that Mary was even pregnant? And it says, and then she says, and, this, and whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? How did Elizabeth know not just that Mary was pregnant, 
But Mary was pregnant with her Lord, with the Son of God. How did she know? Because Holy Spirit filled her and Holy Spirit spoke to her. There was no tongues involved here. There was no, there was no sound of a rushing mighty wind. But we see the majesty of God, the sovereignty of God, the holiness of God in act, inter, interacting in Mary's life. Now, in no way am I moving us away from Acts chapter 2. What I'm doing this morning is focusing. Focusing us on Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit did not begin in Acts chapter 2. Holy Spirit always was. You go back to Genesis chapter 1. The Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Holy Spirit is eternal. The same yeah. as God is eternal. Holy Spirit is God. Amen. Holy Spirit is not unique to a Pentecostal church and Holy Spirit is not limited to an upper room experience. Holy Spirit doesn't need an experience for Holy Spirit to be who He is. Amen. And the reason I say that this morning is that in Pentecostal churches all over America, there's a lot of people who are saved but have never spoken in tongues. And because of that, they have this mindset like there's a certain portion of God that's not going to interact in their life. And I want to tell you this morning, that's not scriptural. When you are saved, Holy Spirit becomes part of your life. And when Holy Spirit becomes part of your life, every part of God becomes part of your life. Amen. God does not withhold something from you simply because you have not had an experience. Amen. God becomes part of your life in everything. God has not held himself back from you. Amen. What does that mean to you then? It means this, that every day when you go to work, you know you're not by yourself. Every time you're struggling with something, you know you're not by yourself. It's not, it's not your responsibility to say, be strong. It's not your responsibility to pull yourself up by the bootstraps. It's not your responsibility to always overcome, to always have an answer. Say this with me. I have a partner. I have a partner. Amen. I'm not by myself. That's right. Amen. I am not by myself. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. I am not by myself. Okay, now what I really want to focus on, though, is and that's not even the sermon. Are we go, okay, go to the sermon now? All right. Luke one forty four says this. As soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb for joy. I want to focus this morning on joy. The baby leaped in my womb for joy. The thoughts that I had as I read the, as with the, when I read that this week, the baby leaped in my womb for joy, and I thought, man, what a what a powerful picture. I mean, here's Elizabeth, and she's old. She's older. I don't know if she's old, but she's older, <laughs> beyond childbearing age, and she's pregnant. Got the baby growing in her. At six months, she's feeling that baby. Yes, I know. I put my, my hand on my belly. I shouldn't have done that. I? I said this for illustration's sake. It's for illustration's sake. <laughs> At six months, she's feeling that baby move, yes? Right. And this was the thought I had. I, I, might, I might be reading a little too much into it, but for our message today, this, this is fine. This baby represented a fulfillment of everything that she could have been praying for at that stage of her life. Yes. This baby represented what was past and that was being fulfilled. But the baby leaped for joy. And this is the thought that I had. Joy was impossible. Joy was impossible. This is happy. That, that baby was happiness. That baby was contentment. That baby was fulfillment. Yes. But she was still lacking joy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll never forget. I think I've shared it here. Our superintendent in Illinois. He used to go around and he would tell people. He would ask people. Are you happy? Jimmy, are you happy? And you know, we're up, we're young ministers. And so every young minister said what? Yes. Well, there's my superintendent. I'm not going to tell him I'm depressed. I'm not going to tell him I'm angry. I'm not going to tell him I'm worried. My superintendent says to me, are you happy? I'm going to say what? Yes. And this is what he would say. That's irrelevant. <laughs> Do you have joy? Yes. Amen. Do you have joy? So here's Elizabeth, she's six months pregnant with this baby that she always wanted, and yet she's still lacking something. What's she lacking? Joy. 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 
And that tells me then as a believer, I can live my life and I can accomplish my dreams, I can accomplish my goals, I can have everything I want, but I can still be lacking joy. Let me show you a verse in the book of Acts. But Acts chapter 8, it says this, Philip went down to Samaria, preached Christ unto them, and the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Unclean spirits crying without, with loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. And now look at the last verse here. And there was great what? Joy, joy in that city. Right? Okay. Amen. So what brought the joy? What brought the joy? At first, we would look and we would see the things that was done. People that were demon possessed were set free. Amen. There was miracles that was happening. Mm -hmm. There's a distinction between miracles and healings, by the way. So there are miraculous healings, and then there are healings. There's there's miracles. There's healing. So there was miracles that took place. So that could be there could be miraculous healings. There's other things that are miraculous. But there was also healing. So how many of you would say this? If we were in a situation here at Gregory's Chapel, if in Gregory's Chapel every Sunday we saw at least one of those things, somebody healed, a miracle right before our eyes, or somebody demon-possessed set free, how many of you think there would be joy in this church? Yeah. I'd say no. I'd say no. There would be excitement in this church. There'd be some, there would be definite excitement in this church. There, and there would be joy in the church, but not as the result of that. Would you put that first verse back up there one more time? See, the result was what they saw, but here's the key right here. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and did what? He preached Christ. He preached Christ. What brought the joy? You see, the human mindset is what brought the joy was the miracles, the demonic, the demonic exorcisms, the healings. That brought the joy. That's not what brought the joy. What brought the joy was preaching Christ. Preaching Christ brought those results. Amen. We go back to Mary and Elizabeth. Mary, when Mary came in the room, she spoke. And there was an excitement. There was something that happened. The sound of her voice stirred the womb of Elizabeth and the baby jumped inside of her for joy, she said. But the, but the scene that I want to paint for you is this. It wasn't Mary's voice. It was Mary's voice, but it was Mary who was carrying who? Jesus. It's Jesus who brings the joy. That's the connection. It's always Jesus that brings the joy. Mary came in carrying Christ in her womb. If you was to do an ultrasound on her, be very small. He would be very almost undetectable. But Jesus being there is what brought joy to Elizabeth. Being what well, Jesus being there is what caused the baby inside her to jump. It wasn't Mary. It was Jesus. Amen. Jesus is who brings excitement today. What we should be as Pentecostals, I am so excited about what God does. And I love ministry of Holy Spirit. I love Holy Spirit. I want Holy Spirit to move in this church. Amen. I can feel Holy Spirit in our worship this morning. Amen. I was sharing with Tim before church this morning some things that God was speaking to me during my prayer time today. I have felt that we can feel Holy Spirit. But let me tell you this. Holy Spirit's job is to bring us to Christ. Yeah. Holy Spirit will always show you Jesus. Holy Spirit will always show you Jesus. Yes, amen. So what I see here is this. Is that my joy comes when I find Christ. Amen. My joy comes when I make Christ my passion. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go back to what I said earlier. Aren't you glad you got a partner? Amen. Holy Spirit's role in my life, Holy Spirit's role in your life is to remind you your passion needs to be Christ. My passion needs to be Christ. Jesus is a requirement for joy. Now what if your passion's money? I heard somebody say this. If your passion is money, no matter how much you accumulate, you'll always want more. Uh -huh. 
If your passion is beauty, you will always see a flaw within yourself. You'll never be pretty enough. You'll always have something to improve. The Bible says it this way in Ecclesiastes 1. It says this. All things are full of labor. Man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Meaning that there is no way naturally to satisfy what the natural desires are. Amen. You're never going to get enough. You guys ever, you know, I put my hand on my belly a while ago, so you know <laughs> I'm going to have to say amen to this. You ever have one of those meals that you ate so much you thought, I'm never going to eat again. You guys ever have one of those meals? Oh, it tasted so good. It tasted so good, and you're thinking, you're still thinking, how can I take more? And number one, a lot of times when you have one of those meals, especially if it's like me, it was at grandma's house. You eat one of those meals and you think, I'm never going to eat again. And grandma's still saying, here, take some leftovers home. Take this, take, take the pie, take the cake, take the chick, take some more home. Didn't want to hurt her feelings, so we took some more. Because we always knew this, no matter how I felt at that moment, I knew eight to ten hours later I was going to be hungry again. <laughs> I knew I might not any, eat anything else that day, but once I had, once I get a good night's sleep in me, I put my mind to it, and I'll be ready to do it again the next day. Right? <laughs> Anybody ever said two days later after that event, you know, like you do that on a Saturday? Anybody ever said on Monday, "Woo, I ate so much on Saturday, I don't think I'm going to have anything else today." <laughs> no, you know why that is. Because the eye and the ear are never going to be satisfied. Amen. But when Jesus becomes your passion, Thank you, Jesus. Jesus not only brings satisfaction, Jesus brings joy. Amen. Jesus brings joy. So the so joy and then joy completes life. Because ultimately, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, you know, sometimes you might you might use that word contentment. I'm looking for joy. I don't want to just be content. Mm -hmm. I want to have joy. Amen. In the midst of my trouble, in the midst of my struggle, I want to have joy. Elizabeth, she knows she's pregnant. She knows there's life in her womb. And yet, she's missing joy. So my question to you this morning is, have you experienced something? That has robbed your joy. Maybe a relationship. Somebody's robbed your joy. Your finances have robbed your joy. It's no good. It's no good when you can't pay your bills. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. Finances have robbed your joy. Your health has robbed your joy. I don't know what's happened. Me and Julie. Not that we're sick or anything like that, but it's, I've been to the doctor more this year than I think I have been in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will say it's because you're just getting old, and I would say that's a mean thing to say. You shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a comedian, and he said, things change after you're 40. So, you know, before you're 40, you go to the doctor. The doctor basically just says, how are you doing? So you turn 40, the doctor says, come on in, close the door, and have a seat. It's a big change. <laughs> in Nehemiah, the Bible says this. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you. This is, this is a way that we have been robbed. We have been robbed to think that situations like that can steal my joy. Now hear me out. I know they can affect my emotion. But my joy is not related to my emotion. Amen. My joy is separate from it. Yes. So I'm going to say this and let you think about it. But that, but that means that a person can be going through a season of depression and still know that they have joy in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because my emotions are separate from my joy. Joy is not from my emotions. We go back to that city in Samaria. Joy was the result of Jesus coming in. 
they were seeing the results. They had joy. In this verse in Nehemiah, what's happened is this, is that they've returned from exile. The walls are being rebuilt. The city is being rebuilt. Ezra and Nehemiah, they, they read the word to them. They, they preach to them. And it says that they make sure everybody understands it. How many of y'all like reading? How many of y'all like reading Old Testament? I should say this way. How many of you read through the Old Testament when you finish and say, man, that's very encouraging. <laughs> How many of you sometimes when you read the Old Testament you think, whew, I'm glad that's not me. Amen. Okay, well, get this. It was them. And not only was it them, but what they were reading applied directly to them because they had just experienced 70 years of an exile as the result of disobedience. <laughs> And God's saying, this is what I'm going to do. And so now these people are hearing it, and the Bible says they were weeping. I don't think it was weep weeping for joy. I think it was weeping for sadness. So look, at we really messed this up. And what in the world's going to happen to us next time? Right? But then we read this, we read this verse that I, that I referenced here in Nehemiah, and he, and he says to them, Eat the fat, drink the sweet, send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. This day is holy to the Lord. And then he says this, neither be ye sorry. And then the joy of the Lord is your strength. Yes. Okay, so he's talking to a group of people who are weeping because they're sad. They're weeping because life is not living up to where they, where they should be. And what does he say? Don't be sorry. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Church, this morning, I want to tell you today, the Holy Spirit, because He brings Jesus, He represents Jesus, is joy. Amen. You can have joy. Yes, amen. Yes. Even though the doctor says you have this or that, you can have joy. Amen. Even though the bank says you have this or that, you can have joy. I heard a comedian say, he said he gets a call every day from his bank telling him that his balance is outstanding. You guys get it? <laughs> you can still have joy. You can still have joy. Because joy is not contingent upon the results. Amen. Joy is Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Joy is Jesus. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I know. So how does that how how does that affect me? Number one, I want to give you just a couple just a couple thoughts. Number one, I want to challenge you with this. Connect yourself today to Christ. You got to be connected to Jesus. John 15, Jesus says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. You guys see that last part? Mm-hmm. Without me, you can do nothing. Well, what does that mean? I've got to get connected to Christ. Right. Amen. I have to connect myself to Christ. I am so thankful that you're in church this morning. But hear, hear me. This attendance in and of itself will not connect you fully to Him. That's all right. Amen. This is a great step. And hopefully you get some encouragement while you're here. But you're going to spend approximately two hours here today. That's it. If you got here at 10, we'll get you out of here by noon. You're going to spend approximately two hours here today. 10, for, what we, 1045 is when we start. I said it's less than two hours. Mm -hmm. Hour and 15 minutes. If you got here for church this morning, an hour and 15 minutes. If you got here for Sunday school, two hours and 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. That means you could go home, turn on Netflix, and watch a movie. And by the end of that movie, you will have spent as much time watching. I have to start, I, I have to connect myself to God. Now, I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. Aren't you glad we got a partner? Amen. Amen. Right? Aren't you glad we got a partner? So, I need to connect myself to Christ, but it's not going to be through, it's not going to be through fanfare, it's not going to be through, it's going to be through making sure I have relationship with Him. Amen. Take some time to pray. Take some time to read your Bible. 
Take some time with people of a like precious faith, people who believe like you, people who can encourage you. I need to start adding things to my life that's going to connect me to Christ. Now, now hear me on this. There's a lot of, a lot of us, a lot of us, I'm not saying you, I'm saying us. A lot of us. We're saved. By the grace of God, we're saved. But when you see this analogy of the vine and the branch, the branch is connected so that it can, it can get the benefit of what flows through the vine. Amen. We're saved. But we're having a hard time with connection. And I want to challenge you today. Let's start taking some steps today to be connected to Christ. I'll also warn you. I've been a Christian for 36 years. Of Grew up in church my whole life, but at 18 years old, I fully committed my life to Christ. So for 36 years, I'm still growing. I'm still learning ways and making new ways to connect to Him. Amen. Now for me personally, I found some things that work very good. But I've also found that when I do those things repeatedly, 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 they also then lose their effectiveness. Because I kind of hid in the neutral. Anybody have that? Mm -hmm. I kind of hid in the neutral. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I can't say how it's going to be for you, but I can tell you how it is for me. And that's this. I am constantly rehearsing and renewing ways that I connect to Jesus. In the same way that Julie and I have been married for almost 36 years now, we relate differently than what we did when we was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still like to do some of the things that, that we did to you know, tease and joke, and but we relate completely differently than what we did at 18. We found new ways to connect. Yes. I want to challenge you this morning to connect yourself to Christ and to make, to make every effort. And then secondly is this. I want to challenge you today to surrender yourself to Christ. Jesus brings joy. Amen. Amen. It's Jesus that brings joy. And we got it mixed up. It's not Bible study that brings joy. It's Jesus. Right. Yes. It's not coming to church that brings joy. It's Jesus. Amen. Right. It's not singing a song that brings joy. It's Jesus. Right. Amen. I want to find Jesus. I want the Marys with Jesus. I, I, I need to hear Jesus. Yeah. That's going to bring me joy. Amen. The challenge of the church today is simple. We need to find Jesus. Amen. We need to hear Jesus. Amen. We need to connect to Jesus. Amen. Not burying one another in small groups. Not burying one another in Bible studies. Or in this book or that book or this conference or that conference. Those things are wonderful. But you better find Jesus. Amen. 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 I can go to a conference and come home and be fulfilled. But that will not be joy. I can read my Bible and say, I did it. And I can hear something new. Feel something new and feel accomplished because I've done it. But that will not bring me joy. Mm -hmm. Or I can just pause. And surrender my life to Him. In Romans chapter 12 it says, the challenge is to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Jesus, today I want to connect to You. I want to connect to Jesus this morning. How many of you would say that again? I want to connect with Jesus this morning. I want to connect with Jesus this morning. Praise God. I got a partner. I was reading this week and it says, only the Spirit knows the mind of God. Mm -hmm. And then very quickly I had that thought, and that's the same Spirit that lives in me. Yes. Amen. I want to connect with Jesus this morning. I want to connect with Jesus this morning. Not because of what I do, not because of what I say, not because of what church I go to. And I want Jesus. I want Jesus. I spent a good deal, a good portion of my adult life 
in a good portion of my ministry, early in ministry, that it was about do and do and do and do. I wish I could go back and talk to some of those people in those first couple of churches that we pastored. And instead of focusing so much on, well, why don't you do this and why don't you do that? And if you ever tried this or tried, I wish I could go back and I could just say, when's the last time you really... If you ask that question, Holy Spirit will give you an answer. Mm -hmm. When my kids was growing up, this is one thing they knew they needed to really double check themselves when they heard dad ask this one question. Are you sure you want to know? Mm -hmm. When they asked me a question, if I asked them back a question, are you sure you want to know? That meant that what was coming was going to be pretty hard to handle. It was going to be some adult stuff. It was going to be something hard to digest. So when the eight or you know, when the eight or nine year old child asking adult questions like, "Where's babies come from?" Right? When dad comes back and says, "Are you sure you want to know?" The first one who was older than that, I asked that question, and she took a deep breath and said, "Yes." So I laid out the information for whatever it was. I won't give you the topic, but whatever it was she was asking for. The second one had his own encounter. Now there's ten and a half years difference between the two of them. He had his own encounter for dad to come back and say, are you sure you want to know? Now there's only two years between the, between the second and the third. And when the third one came to that point and he asked that question and dad replied, are you sure you want to know? The older brother came back and said, you don't want to know. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> when you ask Holy Spirit a question, he will answer you. You might not like the answer. That's right. But in the most loving, gentle way, He will answer. Mm -hmm. Not to condemn you. No. But to free you. When's the last time you felt connected to Jesus? Is there anything in your life that's impeding that connection? Let's pray. God, thank you today for your presence in this room this morning from prayer time before church to through praise and worship to this very moment. God, you are here. Holy Spirit, you are here, active, not speaking to just a few, but to everyone in this room this morning. Jesus, this morning we want to be connected to you. And thank you for Holy Spirit bringing that connection. Making it tangible. Making it real. And Lord, as we pray this morning, speak to our hearts. Anything that is impeding that connection. For those online with us this morning, God, let today be a day of salvation. Let today be a day of renewal and hope. God, I speak freedom. I speak connection. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, God, I give you praise. Your head still.